have the pleasure of speaking with Christopher Ecclestone from Halgarten and Company. How are you today, Christopher? Very well, thank you. Christopher, impact on the Ukrainian, the ongoing Ukrainian invasion from the Russians. How is, have you seen anything happening lately in the resource market that you can speak to us about or you would like to comment on? Um, yes. Okay. So, um, you know, right back at the start of this, when we actually, you and I just discussed this uh, quite a few weeks back now, um, everyone thought it would be over um, very shortly. And in fact, it's dragged on. And so that means that the implications are, are very much changed. Now, the um, sanctions have just started at that stage. Now the sanctions are very significant and they're tightening the thumb screws every day um, and with more implications. So really there's been a big financial disjuncture all around the world um, because of this event. Uh, it hasn't damaged the West's financial markets but Russia, of course, has now said that it wants to be paid in rubles for, uh, for gas and oil. The next step is going to be that they're going to ask for uh, the platinum, the palladium, the nickel, uh, the other project products that they're um, the big players in uh, to be paid for in rubles as well. Um, and while in the nickel space, you know, there are the suppliers in platinum and palladium, uh, except for South Africa, uh, Russia is it. Uh, you want it, you've got to pay. Um, and so that's going to be quite interesting because while well, the mainstream press focuses on the nat gas issue because, you know, Western Europe needs it, um, palladium and platinum are, are just as important for the auto industries uh, and other users. Um, and uh, so there are implications there that are not being thought about um, or published, you know, more widely than just in, in mining circles. Well, further to that, I mean, uh, we saw a lot of gold advocates uh, pushing out pictures about the ruble being backed by gold and suggesting that this might actually have an impact on uh, gold prices. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, well, it hasn't worked. <laughs> if that was the theory, it, 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 it has not worked. Uh, Russia's actually probably in a better position to have it backed by uh, silver than uh, by gold. Uh, well, because while Russia does have gold mines, um, it has very large, a lot of its gold is not actually in Russia. I mean, people are saying that uh, a lot of it's kept in London. I'm not sure, really sure about whether that's true. No one really knows exactly what's kept in London except the gnomes of the Bank of England. But um, uh, they could back the currency with um, uh, commodities. Uh, but the best commodity for them would probably be to back it by nat gas or oil. Um, how many rubles to the uh, to the barrel, rather than how many rubles to the ounce? And I think further to this, we were we had our investor talk this morning. We had uh, John Cash from UR Energy, and one of the investors was communicating uh, a concern that the U.S. is still getting their dominant supply of uranium from Russia and Kazakhstan, and how. Uh, the, the sanctions have not impacted uranium yet. Do you have any thoughts on this? Um, yeah, well, the, it's an interesting question because Kazakhstan, of course, is in Russia's orbit, but theoretically is not Russia. It's not part of the Soviet Union anymore. Um, but, you know, they sort of march in lockstep, but none of the sanctions have actually come down on Kazakhstan. So Kazakhstan can keep selling uh, whatever it sells, um, and justifiably so, because you know, it hasn't been involved in the invasion. But Kazakhstan can also be a leaky back door through which Russian products make their way out into the West uh, and into other markets, um, looking like they're Kazaki when they're actually being mined or extracted in some way in Russia. So... Um, the next step, I would say, if this thing drags on very much longer, is going to be some sort of wider definition of the sanctions and a net being thrown wide and catching other parties, whether they're Kazakhstan or some of the other stands in this, um, in this uh, you know, sanctions um, issue. Sanctions busting could be a, a, an allegation brought against people who are actually hiding Russian product, products as their own and then shoveling them out the door as... Uh, uh, sanctions free. Leaky backdoor. Yes, indeed. 
The last question I have for you, Christopher, is about something that you called so right. I, I you know, I, I hate the words I should have, but you told us first alpha men and you alpha men resources and you told us 10. Would you mind giving us an update on how you were so very right and how they're proceeding? Uh, alpha men is just sort of like stunning. I mean, what other sort of company has gone from zero to uh, the amount of earnings that it's making at the moment in the space of two years. Um, and it's come from a, a, like a standing start because no one, it's been around for a while, but no one had actually been looking at it all that closely until it started its production because people were skeptics that it would happen. Now it's just escalating phenomenally and they're adding, adding on, um, they made a production decision to add on an extra 7,000 tonnes a year. By 2024, the thing is going to be a geyser of cash and they're a dividend payer. So for those out there who are looking for revenues, um, you know, they're one of the rarities on the, uh, the um, Toronto exchange of a, a producer who is willing to share the goodies with the shareholders in the form of a dividend. Well, as always, for those of you out there that may not be familiar with Halgarden and Company's co coverage, please go to this website. And Christopher, as always, it's a pleasure. Please join us regularly for updates on uh, sanction busting. We'll look forward to that one in a couple of weeks. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.